Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the ATA Network Podcast. We are on a roll. We've got a lot of great episodes in the works. Some of the you guys that I've already listened to and, and some coming soon. So just want to start out with just a plug for the show. You know, you clicked on this episode for, for whatever reason. Thank you for doing so. But make sure you stay tuned. I'm, I'm really dedicated to the second season of the podcast. Really going to bring on a lot of great guests like our guest today. So me and this guy, we go back a little ways. And he's been... And now I would call him a really good friend, but it's, it hasn't always been that way. And we're going to talk about that on the show. He's just such a really awesome guy, in in my opinion. And I've said this about a couple of the drivers, but man, I look at, at look at kart racers that I personally know that I've raced with. And if I got to pick a guy to put on my team, if I own if I own a race car, right? I'm this is one of the guys that I look at. He's just he's got the skill, the talent behind the wheel, but he's also got this personality that I love and. I see a lot of similarities between me and, and him and there's things that he, he did that I'm jealous of. And like just his attitude that I couldn't have with cameras on me. He just, he's my favorite race car driver growing up. And this is kind of going way too in depth of a <laughs> intro for this guy, but my favorite driver growing up and I compare, I kind of compare him together. I think of Tony Stewart, man, you, you, you piss this guy off and he's not afraid to tell you what's what he's not afraid to come up to you after the race and be like, you that was not right. And I'm just so excited to have him on the show and we're going to talk about everything. And if you've, if you've watched the videos, if you're a long time viewer of the show, you know, this guy, and obviously a lot of Carters in this, that listen to this, you, you're going to know who this guy is. And I'm really excited for this show because you either know him or you don't know him. And if you don't know him, you're missing out. So without further ado, Ignite Series driver, he's won he's he won at Charlotte, he's won at Quincy. Quincy got to be one of his top wins. You know him, you love him, or maybe you hate him. It's Avery Schwalm. Avery Schwalm, welcome to the ATA Network podcast, my friend. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for that intro. That was really flattering. <laughs> yeah, dude. I legitimately, dude, we're friends, right? We talk every now and then. Mm-hmm. I, you're one of the guys at the track that I wish I hung out with more. Like you talk about you, you have a bad race day and, and you're like, well, screw this. I'm going to the pool and I'm going to go drink a beer. And I don't know <laughs> how many times I was like, damn, I want to go with you and drink a beer and just shoot the shit, man. And that's kind of what this, this show is going to be today. And I'm just, you are one of those guests that I looked at in my, in my list of, of people to talk to. And you're, you're high up on that list, man. Like I just, everything that that you've done and like i know this is going to sound really weird but like i've i came into ignite after you i came in and within three years i was able to get the championship and i moved on but i i really wish that i had gotten a chance to be closer with you and and just to get to know you more because dude i i have a level of respect for you that is is just above and beyond most people that i raced against so it's really awesome to have you on the show i appreciate it and uh I think at some point this year, I could maybe uh, have you out to the pool for a beer. Oh man, that'd be so much fun. We'll have to bring the <laughs> podcast back. We'll, yeah. we'll just do it poolside. It's it's so cool to have you here. And just you know, we'll we'll jump right into it, man. So just like with most people that I've I've had on the show, most kart racers, right? You you were a fan of racing, and then you had the opportunity to go racing. Tell me tell me that story about how you got into racing, and then how you literally got into it, and uh, by by starting kart racing. Yeah. So. <sighs> I mean, I can, I was a race fan as long as I can remember as far as just watching races, mainly NASCAR, but, uh, I slowly became fans of IndyCar and sports car racing. When I got a little older, got a PlayStation and then started racing online and doing racing on there. And I enjoyed it a lot. I never really played iRacing or any of the big fancy simulators, never had an opportunity to really race in real life and i never really thought that it was a possibility uh but uh, i always went to gateway for all the nascar races and indy car races and they had the carplex and started doing some rental card stuff there and then i saw the flyer that was advertising for the marga ignite series and uh i thought oh that's kind of cool and then thought about doing the iDrive series to work my way up into that but for some reason decided not to and decided just to go ahead and get a cart and uh probably wasn't the best thing but i mean this was (laughs) 2017 and so i haven't been racing all that long 
I'm really a late, uh, a late bloomer, I guess, getting into it. But uh, I, cause I didn't do anything before that and uh, jumped right into carding. It wasn't very good off the bat. I mean, our first ever practice session, I, we knew nothing and we just put the card on the ground. I got in it and started rolling off pit road, going into the first corner. I just spin out back into the wall. <laughs> the, my very first corner, I backed the right of the wall because we didn't have tire pressure set or anything like that. So we eventually started getting some help from people to actually put the right tire pressures in and make sure the cart's good to go. So, and then I started progressing into my first year. Again, it was, the first year was just all learning. There really wasn't anything to brag about. Um, and then the second year just kind of started cranking out podiums and have each year I've just had steady progression, more podiums, more wins. It's kind of slow progress, but I, I don't, for me, the struggle is compared to a lot of these guys is they're out there every weekend racing somewhere. The more you race, the better you are. That's just, that's just how it is. That's how track time goes. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm quite as good or elevated as I could be just because I don't, I don't race very often, just kind of more of casual, even though I do really enjoy it. And I really take it seriously for the minimum races I, I do do in real life happens like there's a lot of guys that come out here and you know they may be in school or whatever so they can come out on weekday nights i mean you've got you've got a legitimate job you're you're an adult right so you're 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 looking at this carding thing as a hobbyist thing but you're you're a legit hobbyist like you're serious about this you go out and you and you run those majors and you come to gateway and you become a serious competitor so you know and it's it's funny to me that you that you talk about that you should have done I drive and, and you just kind of jumped right into the fire. I think there's something to be said about how talented you've been though, to, to not have that I drive experience. I think that I drive is a, is a, I mean, it, and at least this is going to kind of be something that we talk about later in the show, the, uh, the quality of racing and the sportsmanship back when I did, I drive, it was there, right? It was, it was classy. You weren't beating and banging off people. Now it's kind of changed a little bit, but back when I did, I drive, when it was me and Lauer and Russell, all these guys, like if you could prove yourself in I drive, it kind of thought that it kind of wasn't a way it proved that you could probably be good in ignite. And if you weren't good in I drive, well, don't waste your time doing ignite. So I think it I think it says a lot about you that you were able to kind of get into Ignite and sure you struggled. I mean, I think for everyone their first year is a is a learning year, but you've you've in the short period of time that you've been racing, um you've you've been able to shine. So I think that that says a lot. Just kind of about that that natural talent maybe and and just your passion for it. I think a passion also really shows too. I mean, you see some of the kids that come out here and maybe their parents are into racing and the kids aren't really into it. And if they're not passionate, they're not going to really push. And, and you can tell that you've, you're passionate. You played the video games. You've got the reaction time down. You've got, you know what a racing line is, you know, you've, you've learned it. So, you know, you come out in that first year and it was a learning year. 2018 comes around. You, you've got that second year, you're in your sophomore year now of Ignite. And so you're expected to come out and get on the podium and, and you do. Unfortunately, you've got to deal with some idiots coming in and from the rental side, like Brendan Lauer, Bobby Krug, <laughs> that don't, maybe not necessarily understand the ropes. And I don't, I think we ended up racing around each other, but we were clean in 2018. Um, the, the moment that you ended up, instead of just becoming a normal competitor, the moment that you became a guy for me to keep my eyes on, if you, <laughs> if you will, is... The race in 2018 that I ended crying. I, I, this is the, the race in 2018 where I was crying after I got off the track. I had went out and in my first year in Ignite, I didn't think I would do very well. And I ended up coming to the track and I just had a lot of speed. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I, like you, I, I just had those freshmen unknown. Like I didn't know what I was doing. Although people thought for some reason being the iDrive scholarship guy, being Margay, giving me a cart that I had all the tr- – the, the, tips and tricks I didn't know anything I'm relying on Schwagen coming over and maybe looking at my carburetor but that was about it and something was just lucky that day and I had speed won the pre-final went out in the race and I uh I was leading most of the race and Gage Rucker came and chased me down and and passed me and Ryan Bettenhausen passed me I I was really low on momentum and there's this guy that passes me on the inside in 3b and I kind of just kind of cut him off and we get tangled together I look back and I see this orange number two and I, I never forget I was like I'm, I was so devastated in that moment too. I get passed for the lead, right? And I'm sure you you have memories like this, right? You get passed for the lead and you're like, 
you just there's such an intense emotion and then i look back and see you and and i come off the track crying and and there was just a lot of emotion and it was just the way the day went but something about you being in that position in that moment just that that, that incident that probably didn't seem like much to you it just stuck in my mind and, and your number was there but just by value of me just having a really bad race and just and remembering that what do you even really remember that race by by any means do you put that as like the mark of the start of anything no, I, I remember the race. I remember the incident, but I never knew that it affected you that much because I, I, <laughs> I honestly had no clue. We didn't talk about it at all because in my eyes, it was a total racing deal. And I understood my position and I understood your position and why you may be upset uh, because, you know, these carts are so momentum based mm -hmm. that when you lose momentum, you could lose multiple spots and you want to try not to check up by any means and you know you lost your momentum coming out of that corner onto the straightaway and i had to take it and kind of went down to the inside maybe wasn't fully my position but i had a nose kind of ran up over the curb and we, we just made contact it's mm -hmm. not what i wanted to do because as soon as we made contact it just killed both of our momentum right uh but i i didn't know that it was that big of a deal thought it was just a racing thing i knew you were upset because you were in uh obviously positioned to maybe win the race but i know i didn't think our little skirmish for third <laughs> was really what upset you that day 12 12 minutes into this and we've already turned into a therapy session i'm sorry honey i didn't know i upset you like, <laughs> but no and i may have explained that a little bit uh, too intense but you know it it was just like you said a racing deal right so it was nothing mm -hmm. that you know, you weren't at fault. I wasn't at fault. You know, I think of, and, and you can attest to this too. There's two places on this track at, at gateway cartplex, right? Where we race in St. Louis. If you're not, if you, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know this, I mean, come on. Uh, that's what my channel is all about. That's what, that's where I've kind of made myself from is, uh, the grounds at gateway cartplex, but there's like two places that you really can't pull off the pass. And it's really coming out of three B cause it tightens up and the chicane and the North pole, right? Those are like two like danger spots. And, and I've, I've had that same thing. What you did to me happen multiple times before. And I've also done that to people before I've tried making a pass in three B and it just gets all tight. All of a sudden you're like, actually oh, no. happened to, uh, Eggemeyer and Osborne, I think, earlier last or last year's last year, where oh, probably they, yeah. they got together in like second place and it ended up, I think, knocking Eggemeyer's chain off. Is it the same scenario where oh, he barely yeah, had a yeah, nose? Yeah. Barely had a nose, and he they weren't too hot happy about that either one of them. No. Well, and and like I said, like I just no one's at fault. It's just that's just the one of the things is one of the little un, unwritten codes. Like we'll talk about later in the show, but like it's like one of those things that you just like. It's just a racing deal, right? I mean, the track, I mean, mm -hmm. that's such a straightaway. You should be able to make a pass there, but it just tightens and it's, yeah. it just happens. And then unfortunately, that's just kind of how Gateway is. It's just such a tight track. Mm -hmm. And when you're really close with your competitors, it's hard to make that clean pass it's when you're when you're so even and, you know, contact's almost bound to happen sometimes because of it being so tight. But we try to avoid it the best we can. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you and you said it perfectly too. These carts are momentum. So as soon as you lift off that, you're you're gonna lose speed over like half a lap to a lap, maybe around gateway. You know, mm -hmm. so that that process of like for in your shoes, you know, lifting or trying to make a move on the outside instead of going the inside. I mean that you would have probably got passed anyways. So you yeah. you saw the gap. You saw I was slow. It it just all happened. And honestly, me being a slower cart on track and getting passed, I should have realized. You know, there's probably a train of carts coming because that's just how ignite is spec series everyone's everyone can be within you know you have the top 10 within two tenths something crazy yeah. like that so it's just a just a product of the system yeah and and i think the way that uh that track is and you know usually i want to work with people but i don't even think i had a podium at that time so you know and usually like i said i want to work with people because that's working together is how you you stay with people if you just race side by side the leader's just going to check out stuff like that so I, I don't even think I had a podium at that point and it was winding down in laps. So I think I saw third place, a podium. And that's why I really took that, tried to take that position because I, I kind of figured I wasn't a threat to win, but I was a threat to get a podium. And and it's, it's all about mentality. Racing is such a mental sport. So like mm -hmm. you're like, I think of like my mindset back in that day. Right. I mean, I was like staring at my first ever win, 
which is this mm-hmm. just amazing feeling, right? And I see that and it gets taken away from me and and you don't I don't understand patience. I don't understand things like that. I'm I'm thinking about making moves and trying to get to the front whereas after I've won a race or two, then you understand the patience and the calmness factor and how important that is. So, you know, me and you were in two different mental places back then than where we are now. We're a lot more mature. We've we've both had success. And we can look back at that and be like, wow, you know, how silly, how silly that was. Mm-hmm. Fast forward now to, to the second incident, if you will. So mm-hmm. I, I felt like you wronged me, although it's just a little racing deal. Now we move on and I've wronged you. We get to our second encounter and to kind of set the stage a little bit, you know, 2019 comes around. And like you said, when you, when you mentioned, you know, you, you improve as the year goes on. So now we've got Avery Schwalm trying to find a podium. Now he gets on the podium. Now he's a consistent podium guy. Bobby goes out. I ended up getting, like, I think I got maybe two podiums my first year. And now in 2019, in total, I got four podiums. So, you know, I'm getting consistently better. And me and you both getting consistently better, both fighting for the same piece of real estate. We're racing around each other more. And we were actually in a pretty tight battle in points for third and points at the end of the year for the 2019 championship. So we're being around each other a lot more. We're both getting better. We're both getting faster and we're realizing that. Mm-hmm. And um, go ahead and walk me through. So I want you to take the, take the mic on this one. So 2019, we're going into the backwards race at Gateway Carplex and you and Eric Ladeke actually got into it in the pre-final and you hit his back bumper and you ended up getting like disqualified for it. You and Ladeke have to start from the back now and you guys are making your way kind of through the field and and you guys get to me. Walk us through that 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 feature race. Yeah, so I got put towards the back because I uh, barely tapped Ladeke. It, It was hardly a touch, but it was one of those corners where hardly a touch could upset a cart and looped him i had to start in the back i actually this is i think one of the only times i've ever gotten dq'd and it was actually in two different things it was that and also our fuel didn't pass because we had old fuel so i ended up getting dq'd in two different ways so i really couldn't be mad about either because it was just obviously it wasn't meant to be but ended up starting last which i think was like 12th or 13th or so i had a pretty good cart i think a second place cart but uh, never really in that race. I mean, I was coming up through traffic, but didn't seem like I had the same pace to get back up to the podium. Um, <clears throat> a lot of key got up there and we're halfway through the race. And I, <laughs> this is another thing I, that was kind of a problem that race is I had my tin advisor and it was a night race. I forgot oh, yeah. my clear visor. We've all been there. I feel like <laughs> I could not see, I was running over curbs I just could not see. So I ended up having to lift my visor up. If you actually, I think you can actually look in your video and you can see. So I was running, I got up to fourth or fifth and I was running without a visor and I was probably going to finish fifth. I think Hunter Richardson was way out front in the lead. Yeah. And it was you. It was his year, 2019. It was you, Eric Lodicke and uh, Dylan Ellsworth racing for second. And you guys were racing so oh, damn hard my i was not i was not gonna catch you three but you <laughs> you three were running each other three wide dive bombing and up on curves pa- and pause for a second dude i i forgot about that and it just re- i just got brought back memories of looking at dylan's video and he and he like rammed into me in the 90 and like i'm full lock to the right like drifting through the 90 and it was just so crazy but yeah, yeah go, keep going yeah, so I, when I saw you, you three, all over the place, I'm like, man, I might have a chance to get up there and get a podium. Uh, once I started getting closer, I started realizing why you need a visor covering your eyes because I <laughs> was getting dust just in the eyes. But I, I got to you guys. You guys kind of all settled down for a second. I passed Dylan. I passed Eric, and then I passed you, all clean without contact. <laughs> and uh, it's the last lap, and I going through the second class corner coming out of it i kind of glance over my shoulder to look how far back you are and you're probably three cart lengths back i'm like okay i got this he's he he can't make a clean move from there so i didn't choose the really defensive line i just kind of chose the normal line and next thing i know when i'm about to meet the apex i just get side potted you slam the hell out of me and uh 
you were your right sides were up on the curb and uh you definitely carried a lot of momentum you kind of pushed me wide and i went from second to fourth and i lost the podium yeah because you and that Lonnie momentum were like side by carried side me to the outside yeah and i was hot and when we got back to the pits because it would have been one thing if i would have got third still but you knocked me off the podium altogether and that that really pissed me off and when we got into the pits took our helmets off you you said something on the along the lines that uh i'm tired of being the ball i needed to be the bat hey i said that and yes i believe did. it yeah and, and and i'm like what the hell does that mean i'm like <laughs> I'm like you, you two or you three were up there beating each other and, and, and slamming into each other. And I come up and pass you clean. And all of a sudden you're going to hit me. I'm like, what the hell did I do? I, so I was, I was, I didn't take too kindly to that comment because I thought I raced you perfectly fine. So, and you know, it, it was, it was just a lot in one where I came from the back I had my visor up and get sand in the eyes, drove all the way to the podium position, and then just to get taken away from me. Usually, I probably would have said more to you yeah, <laughs> and stuff that I probably could not repeat, but I ended up just going to the race director, which I don't even know who it was, and it then was talking Danny to Danny and Keith, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was having a pretty heated conversation with them because... I got penalized early on in the day and I thought that that should be a penalty that you can't just drive in and, and side pod the hell out of somebody. And you know, th- the momentum you carried was enough for me to lose two spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was trying to get you penalized. I was and thought that I had a good case, but apparently not. If they're not gonna, if this is acceptable, then I'm just gonna, I'm going to change the way I race and going into the, the next race. Hold on a second. Let me let me pause you for a second because <laughs> I, I I we cannot leave that race without me telling not oh. not necessarily my side of the story because you're 100 yeah. percent correct. Like that move was just awful. And if in normal <laughs> circumstances I would never race people that way, but I did that mm-hmm. night, and so there's no excuse for that. And then I, you know, I don't I don't know if I deserved what I, what came to me, but it it first off it made for entertaining YouTube. So thank you for that. Um, oh yeah. Uh, but no, it, and, and we, and there's a good life lesson to come out of all this and we'll get to that in a moment, but going back to that race, right? I mean, the reason that I probably said the bat and ball thing was because I was getting balled around between those two. And I didn't really think that, you know, you weren't a part of the deal, but you know, and, and I was in that race and to get just shoved around the entire time, I just figured, you know, if, if all these yeah. guys are cool with it, I just did it in the heat of the moment. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I remember that last lap, right? We're going down the backstretch and I'm, I'm in second. You and Lodicky and you were working together a little bit. I think he gave you like a little bit of a push out of north or he was just drafting off of you. So I went back to, to fourth. And so I also, I mean, I cleanly got passed for the record, but I also felt like I got taken off the podium. So I sent it in on Lodicky in a turn two. And then I just, I just sent it in on you. Like I was just like, I was just so fed up with all the contact in that race. I sent it in on you. <laughs> and now I'm probably the reason they've got that white painted line uh, yeah. in the, in the exit of turn one to just tell people to not do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, my driving was completely awful, but fun story about that. Right. So that, that was my first ever second place finish. And uh, I stand on the trophy and I'm super proud. I remember the post-race interview too. Like I was just so heated and I'm like so proud of myself. And I'm like, yeah, if people want to race me that way, I'll race them like that. And I thought I was such mm-hmm. a, such a cool dude. And to be completely frank. And, and as of now, I don't have any deal with Margay. So I'm not, I don't, I can say whatever I want now. And the beautiful thing is, is like, I think Keith Freeber saw that video that I did where I did that to you for second place. And he saw the video afterwards and I don't think Freebird has really liked me much uh, cuz he thought that I promoted a really bad side of Ignite but the thing is, is I want to be as transparent as possible. So if yeah. I was if well, I was dumb That's racing. <laughs> yeah, and if I was dumb, I wanted to I wanted to show it and if I was if I was also being dumbed too, I suppose for lack of a better verb, um, you know, I want to show that too. So I just want to be transparent, right? Um, mm-hmm. so that happened and then so I got the second place trophy as my first second place trophy. And I go out with a bunch of guys 
like Lauer and and Scott McClendon and and all these guys, and we were going out and partying, right? And I we go out to dinner, and I bring the trophy. I don't think you even know this story, so this is gonna be pretty fun. We go out and we oh go out boy. to a restaurant, and then we have a pool party with it. And I have the trophy in my hand, and I'm throwing it up and down in the pool, uh, like like an idiot. Like I'm celebrating this. Like I won the <laughs> Super Bowl, right? Um, and I got the trophy, and I'm throwing it around, and I break. And this is this is funny for two reasons. One, I break the tip of the D off, which that phrase in itself just sounds hilarious, right? And so, and so now it says two in a, right? It's an A now. It's not a D. So I call it my tuna trophy. Get it? Tuna. So it's, <laughs> it sits in, it sits with, with all my other trophies on my shelf with all these water stains on it. Cause I'm throwing it around in a pool like an idiot and it's my tuna trophy. So I, I figured I'd share that cause I thought that was funny. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think in a way that trophy breaking was just a little bit of karma. <laughs> karma <laughs> kar- karma's a bitch. It, it, it voided the trophy. <laughs> It's like this whole deal was fishy, man. So here's a tuna trophy for you. Um, yeah, and and when I when I was complaining to the race director, I also wasn't complaining just about you because I was complaining about all of you guys. That, oh, it was that awful. Were, yeah, when, when all three of you were you know slamming into each other, I I told Keith, I'm like, I wouldn't even caught them if they weren't running each other all over the track. I mean, you gotta do something about that, but you know, yeah. In that in that whole deal, I remember that I I don't know if I was asked or I just presented the GoPro footage, and um, mm-hmm. and they looked at it and they made their decision and I remember you specifically saying something and I don't I don't want to put words in your mouth but you you called me like the gateway boy or something right you're like well you're yeah. you're doing that because he's he's the gateway boy and in in the back of my mind right I <laughs> I didn't disagree with you I totally agreed with you but the thing the funny thing is is like bruh like yeah sure i work here i'm the gateway boy but i also now work for margay and i'm doing video stuff with him and that's the only reason i got a cart so i'm not just the gateway boy i'm the margay boy too so i've got, yeah <laughs> i've got double privilege on you sir so it's it was funny that all that went down yeah I, that way. I you know it's just one of those things that oh uh, in the heat of the kind moment of, kind of like a, a post-race interview in nascar or something when mm-hmm. you know the guy says something <laughs> that's pretty out there i mean that I just kind of said that because, you know, obviously you were the gateway boy and you guys were all, I mean, there's, there's a group that's, you know, I guess, I guess a click, if you will, that Mm -hmm. it's just all these gateway people. And I've always uh, kind of felt like I've never been in the click. I've always felt like almost a dark sheep in a way. You want to be a part of the gateway boys or sorry, it was the iDrive boys. (laughs) Sorry. That's what we called our little click of iDrive people. uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I never felt like I was part of anything and uh, felt like I was maybe looked at differently, potentially. That makes um, me so but, sad. That makes me so sad. Uh, it's it's more just, I, I don't know how to I should have got it, that but... beer with you. <laughs> well, no, it's crazy because yeah. you, you say that because I totally understand that because like when I first started racing here and I was in iDrive, you would see like these kids, right? And by kids, I mean... Stommer, Kohlbecker, Rucker, they would all be in their clique. And you look at them as an iDrive guy and be like, oh, look at the Margay boys, those privileged little kids running mm-hmm. around, their daddy and mommy paying for their cart and working on their cart. And they just show up after school and they get to race it. And then I'm over here with Brendan Lauer, Austin Russell. We don't have the money. We can't afford to go racing. And we're stuck here in iDrive and we got to work our way into the series. And so it's interesting yeah. to hear you say that because technically you're – you're almost like a third level out of that. Like you, yeah. no I, one, no I mean, one, I don't want to say this in a, in a rude way, but in my visualization of it, like you don't have a lot of people that are coming up to you being friends with you, you know, like no, you're not, you're not I having mean, these relationships like where I'm being friendly with everybody and having this vlog. Yeah. And so you've got like me and Austin Russell and Lauer and Scott McClendon. And then you've got, you know, Gage Rucker and Spike Kohlbecker and all those guys. And then there's Avery Schwalm, you know, with his with a stepdad or whoever and they're just kind of working on their own thing just there to race yeah well a, a big thing that contributes to that is i'm i'm pretty shy believe mm-hmm. it or not uh but uh so that that kind of uh I, i'm not the kind of person to really go up to people i mean I, I will casually and stuff like that but for the most part i'm i'm pretty reserved and except for when i come off the track and I'm pissed off, then I will gladly go up and get in somebody's face. <laughs> Let's move on now. Let's move on. I'll let you kind of take the reins on this, but we get to the, that third and final encounter. Actually, let me, let me start this off first. So I don't remember the photo exactly, 
Oh, but, oh man. <laughs> but you post on Instagram coming up to the race how I'm approaching the weekend. It's, I think it's a photo of Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin. Who, who Terry was Labonte. it? Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte. This historic moment from Bristol where, you know, Dale Earnhardt wrecks this fan favorite for the lead. And the story about that whole deal in itself is a, is a cool one. And you can find that online. So you post that on social media and I saw that and I screenshot it and I'm sending it to the guys like, Oh shit, boys, it's about to hit the fan. And <laughs> so then I see that and I literally take the exact same font and the exact same word wording, how I'm approaching the weekend. And it's a photo of Ricky Bobby and Cal Naughton Jr. on the podium dancing with each other. Like I just thought I'd send that out on the socials and post that and just like kind of like mm-hmm. poke it right back at you just to create, you know, and like, yeah, there's, there's, when I saw that, I knew right away. I knew right away. <laughs> uh, did so when you saw that, was it like, was it like F this kid or was it, did you know? It, it was more. No, it was it wasn't either. It was more it's on acknowledgement of like I saw it, I've noticed yeah. it, I've taken it, note. Yeah. I wasn't pissed at it, but I wasn't laughing about it. It was more just <laughs> it's on. Like yeah. we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so we get into that just go walk walk me through that race. So I just want to state going into the race, my intentions were not to wreck you. Uh, as much as it might have seemed like oh, it. Oh, I definitely started my, the I, whole deal that race. I started it on that <laughs> race too. I, I was not, I was not have any intentions to wreck you. I was not going to, uh, you know, run into you every chance I got. It was more, I'm going to race you differently. I'm going to race you more aggressive. And as soon as you touch me, it's on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was funny because like it always seems as soon as you have a problem with a guy, you're always right next to him. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it seemed like every practice session and everything, we were right next to each other on the time charts. And we ended up starting on the same row for the race. I was on the outside and we went through turn one and turn two. And then we were going through turn three, which is the left hander. And I was still on the outside of you. Uh, but I had a little, I was a little further ahead. You kind of, you were, you had the position, but you, drove it in just a little bit harder and it was enough just to barely run up into me mm-hmm. normally this incident would be nothing <laughs> like I, it <laughs> would any normal be, day, yeah it, it would be nothing <laughs> but after what you did the previous race that little touch all of a sudden put a red mist <laughs> in my helmet <laughs> and i tucked in behind you on the straightaway and then the next corner i did not wreck you i did not drive in full speed but i laid the bumper to you and just bump, 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 moved you up the track mm-hmm. and uh, got back by you. And then a couple laps went by and you got back to me. And in that same corner, I bumped you. You started bumping me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not how this works. <laughs> I got you back. You don't get to get me back. I don't, I don't do that payback for payback stuff. So I, I may or may not have hit the brake pedal oh you definitely did i did you definitely did (laughs) uh coming out of the the little chicane there and checked you up pretty good (laughs) and then and then i decided to call you number one down the straightaway (laughs) just to make sure you knew uh and then apparently you had your what your your seat broke after you made contact with another guy oh my god yeah dude freaking so the i don't i don't know how much more you want to explain but let me put in as a note like you were like half the problem that race. You weren't even like the whole thing that race. It was Austin Blair. <laughs> Austin Blair, for whatever reason, thought he could pass me um, going to the North Pole. And it, it, you can make a pass in North Pole, but if you don't clear by the chicane, like, what are you doing? And part of that was me. I should have actually just hit the brakes and checked up because he seemed to be faster. But I would hold it in on the outside of North Pole. We'd get to the chicane, and he thought he had the position going to the corner. And then I would just jump the curb. I jumped the curb down the chicane in that race. More times in that race than I have not in that race. Like, I literally probably <laughs> hit that curb six or seven times. So what ended up happening was my seat strut on the right side that's kind of up by uh, your ribs, it broke there, and then I broke both of the ones at the kind of like my butt, right? And so I would pretty much went around the entire track the entire time getting flung around in a broken seat that's being held on by one seat strut while the bottom mm-hmm. of the seat is scraping the ground. Like, my butt was on fire. Like there was, there was just so much friction and I'm driving this thing and I'm, I'm still wheeling it. I mean, I, I didn't lose many positions. Right. And I was able to kind of stay with it, with this broken seat. I broke the seat. I think, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't think, don't think there's really much else damage that had happened in that race. But, um, yeah, I mean, what do you, anything else from that race that you remember? Uh, 
I remember when we came off the track, you had finished two spots behind me, which was perfect. You know why? Because you lost me two spots the race before. <laughs> and, all, and, and all I needed to do was that little break check to send you into the Wolves or Austin <laughs> Blair. <laughs> and when we came off the track, usually when I run into people, I'm not the kind of person that's going to keep my helmet on and go hide in my trailer or something. Mm. I'll usually come tell you why I hit you. If it was an accident, I'll apologize, which is the best thing you could do. Yep. You know, go apologize to people. But this was not for an apology when I came up to you. It was more, this is why I did this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you were you were pissed. <laughs> and you were you essentially said something like, I hope you're happy. My damn seat mount is broke <laughs> and my ass was dragging and it's on fire. <laughs> so and then you you were you were just pissed off and I was trying to explain why I did it, but yeah. you were just too pissed off. So well, I, I walked yeah. away. And, and I think I said something along the lines of I, I like I think I ended it with like I hope we're like F and even or something like that. Yeah. So and then I, I went back, we loaded everything up, I grabbed a beer, shocker, <laughs> and uh, just was kind of decompressing, mm -hmm. calming down. And then I realized, you know, I'm gonna go talk to this guy and really explain this scenario. And I went up to you and I just said, Hey, I I don't like racing like this, but you last last race set the tone and I'm not going to let you race me like that. So that's what you get. But and I, and I looked at you and I said, but we're done doing this. We're not going to do this anymore. I don't want to race like this. We're we're done. Mm -hmm. And we agreed, shook hands, kind of laughed about it. You said so you said ignore because you did a post race yeah. interview for your YouTube yeah. and you were still hot. And you, you said, ignore what I have to say on the YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, you didn't add our conversation onto the end of that video or, or, or that we had a conversation mm -hmm. because that video literally ended with, I was a horrible person. <laughs> and and I, I watched the video and I I saw somebody in the comments that just, they were like, that Avery guy is an asshole. I'm like, <laughs> holy holy shit I'm, and i'm like bobby could have at least said that we had a conversation yeah. afterwards i mean but uh i think the the best part about that and I, I think that was both of our first real rivalry i mm -hmm. mean you have you have incidents where on a one weekend or a day where somebody runs into you and you run them back but that was the first time for both of us where it actually transferred from race to race. I think after that incident was we, we gained a lot of respect for each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's important is the fact that I came up to you. We talked about it and we said, we're going to, we're done. We're going to race clean. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, they, once they put that helmet on, they're a whole different person and they'll drive you all over the racetrack, run into you. They don't care. And then after the track, after, after the race, they'll keep their helmet on or they'll take it off and won't even look you in the eye, go hide in their trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and it's a huge lack of respect, but we talked about it. We gained a lot of respect for each other after that, because we never had an incident after that and actually ended up becoming friends. So I think that's a lesson that a lot of people should learn from our incident or their own incidents that don't hide from it. Don't you know take it head on and if you ran into somebody apologize or mm -hmm. or just talk it out uh because i mean i'm not gonna lie controversies are kind of fun i don't yeah. mind them yeah uh, and you know i don't i don't mind getting into it with somebody but i don't want to do it every race because right. that's when it gets old well um and i agree i mean everything you just said there is the like the word of god of uh, in the racing world right like everyone that's listening that does race i agree with everything you said you know you may come off the track and you're a little hot maybe don't go and like curse at them and go fight them but like you let yourself simmer down like what you did you know you went to the trailer you packed up and then you grabbed a beer and you're like okay let's 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 have a more yeah. in-depth conversation about this that's very important yes and you know the 
the beautiful and like like you said, we all love a good controversy. We all love the good drama. It gets the blood flow going, and especially for the guy that's got the the YouTube channel, right? I think that was another oh, thing. Yeah, I, you, I, I you said were at the, it. I, yeah, at the very end, at the very end of the night, when you came over with your beer in your hand and we we're talking about it, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna make for good YouTube. Like it, it gonna be good. But you know, I ended up with a broken seat at the end of it and had to go back and fix it. And that's just such a valuable thing that we don't see much mu- any or see much anymore. You know, just people being aggressive week in, week out, not taking, you know, accountability for their actions and not wanting to improve their, their race craft. Um, yeah. But before I really move on, it's funny that you mentioned how I should have put it in the video that we kissed and made up. Cause in my mind, while you're saying that, I'm thinking, what are you talking about, dude? I should have put in our post race <laughs> right at the scales conversation where I'm like yelling at you, like, bro, you broke. It's funny that you, that you, you recount it and you remember it, remember it. Cause I have awful memory. Right. And the way that you explain it, I can hundred percent picture myself being like, yeah, dude, you, you broke my seat. My ass was dragging. It's on fire. I'm like, my butt's hot. <laughs> like I just, that sounds so accurate. So, so perfect. So I, I just, I wish I would have put that in the video, but, um, yeah. and it's, it's funny too, that you remember, the way that you describe flipping me off and as you calling me number one, I, I've actually put in here your caption post post um, your Instagram caption with from the post that you made after that race. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, let me just read this for, for just everyone there because it's pretty funny. Hard fought P4 last night, which all things considered is pretty good after a bit of a night off night for me. Pretty sure we had the wrong gear, which hurt us, but nobody could get us get to us on the straightaway, which is good on a track where it's hard to pass. Also got a black flag pointed at me. Not sure why. I was just telling at ATA Network he's number one laughing face and then in parentheses at the end, we're all good. So I, I just, that's, I go back in like I'm reading to, that now. I wanted now. to, yeah, I wanted to uh, put emphasis on the we're all good because I feel like a lot of people were looking at me like, what the hell? He's just going to run into people, but I don't, I don't, usually I don't run into people for no reason. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that just runs into people casually. Yeah. And I, I try not to be, unfortunately we had that run in, but like you said, and to kind of wrap up our little rivalry discussion, we made up at the end, we did the right thing. Both of us, you know, we became friends because of it. Now we're sitting here and talking about it and able to laugh and recount it and kind of be able to talk about it. I think it's going to be really cool to, especially for viewers of mine that watched that vlog and, and watched all the tension and the emotion going through both of us and to be able to listen to us talk about that now, I, that's just so cool. I'm going to go back mm-hmm. and listen to this. I mean, it's going to be so, so much fun. So I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate everything that happened because not only did it, it really build respect for both of us, but I think it made us more respected drivers and maybe even respect other people more just based on like mm-hmm. seeing what could happen out there, what the consequences are and how to resolve it and realize, you know, yeah. the little petty stuff didn't, didn't matter. You know, yeah. it's all about, you know, long term, and we ended up going on and, and battling each other hard for the rest of the season to, for, you know, points. And so it ended up being a really fun rest of the season for us. Mm-hmm. And then we fast forward to 2020 and I win a championship and I leave. Yeah, <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> wish I could have battled you a little more that year, but, uh, that's you, just the, uh, you deserved it. Uh, I mean, being all transparent, it's the beauty of my my deal to go make video for Margay, and then they would sell my old cart, and I'd get a new one at the beginning of the year. I mean, once you got rid of Evan, Evan Stommer and Hunter Richardson, the competition level decreased a little bit, and then you got these guys like yourself, you know, on an older chassis. I was just, I mean, completely transparent, right? I, I, I realized that I'm talented, right? I've gone on and done Skip Barber and got on the podium in the Formula car too, so I know I can do it, but, like, there's also that, Everything else was correct too. The cart was good. The engine was good. No funny business, however, but everything was just perfect for me. So yeah, I think had you been on a new cart, all things considered, I think we would have continued battling on. And we 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 did get the opportunity to go do that. We'll talk about Charlotte here in a minute, but I want to kind of pull myself out of the picture of racing you and just kind of talk about some of the stuff that you've been able to do. One one place in particular, and this kind of covers over a couple different races, is. Uh, the Quincy Grand Prix, and I, I've been to that event. I've filmed at that event. I've never raced it. You, as a person that's raced it multiple times, had the the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. Explain to me what makes the Quincy Grand Prix. Grand, sorry, I just offended everybody by calling it the Grand Prix. The Grand Prix. Uh, the Quincy Grand Prix 
and explain the importance of that event and and your uh and your time racing that event when it was 2018 uh when they brought it back after 14 year absence it's just a it's just such a badass race there's really no other way to describe it and the track is literally in a park where you're racing down a park path and it's the most dangerous track I've ever raced on. And that's part of the excitement is just the track itself. I mean, there's a, there's a damn jump going into <laughs> turn one where you get air and the speed, the, the way the corners are and how there's a, a hump in the middle of the road where if you're on the other side, you're, you're almost sliding into the wall and the people that come out, that's a huge event for that town. They, they, pack the whole hillside it's, it's so cool to actually go out and race in front of a crowd and the just the history of it you know i think you know guys like jamie mcmurray and a whole bunch of others have have raced there and i love that race and i hope it never goes away and even if i get to a point where i scale back on my racing mm-hmm. i probably will try some way somehow to be a part of that race because that it's just such a cool event you you go out on your first time at quincy and you end up, you know, engine problems, getting a flat tire, but then you come back in the in the feature race and you get on the podium in your first time at, at Quincy. What what was that like? I'm sure that was a pretty shocking experience. Yeah, I mean, because that was my first podium uh, outside of Gateway and um, ended up getting the pole for that race, which was shocking. Apparently, I'm pretty good at getting poles because I have, I think, three there how I got the pole, I, I was pretty confident I ran a good lap, but when they were actually rattling off like the top starters over the intercom and my name came first, I was kind of shocked because I, I've never gotten a pole and, and been really that fast at the start of the race. I was with, uh, Keith Scharf and Matt Kretchel and very, two very experienced car racers. Mm-hmm. And they, immediately passed me so i did not last long in the lead they immediately passed me and i said well i'm just going to tuck in behind them and and work with them and that's how you that's how you uh do good in these races is you need friends you need to work with people you can't just dive bomb and want to lead every lap it's just not how it works and uh so i got behind crutchel and and sharf and we checked out us top three i looked back and realized nobody's behind me and I'm like, holy crap, I got a podium locked down. <laughs> so I was thrilled for that and had a chance to win the race. Uh, unfortunately, coming out of the last corner, I uh, got real tight and just kind of lost momentum. So didn't have a really chance to win on the last corner, but still to get a podium there was incredible. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. And then, so we go to the, the year after 2019, and I was there. I actually, that was my f- my first time witnessing the what the Quincy Grand Prix was. I mean, this is a crazy event. The whole town comes out. And they're lining the, the entire racetrack. I mean, I had, at this point, I had never been outside a gateway, right? And so we don't get much spectators. And to see the amount of people that came out for this event and just how special it was for this community, I mean, you got a TV crew there. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. So I'm going there, and I'm filming it, and I'm going around this track, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, exactly what you said, man. I mean, this is a dangerous place to go, but, and, and the jump's really cool too. And I'm mm-hmm. going through and I'm filming all this video and I'm watching you race in the senior race. And, you know, I want you to walk me through the weekend and to I, kind of ruin your thunder here, spoil it. I'm, I'm sitting at the start finish line and, and you and Jeff Dolian, you know, you guys are the top two and I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to come back at the checkered flag. And in my mind, I'm like, let's go Avery. Let's go. Like, come on. I want you to secure this. And you and Jeff Dolian side by side at the line, you lost it by ironically 0.051 hashtag my number. So mm-hmm. you know how that you, you had the speed there. You, you kind of like what I said earlier, how defeated I was when I saw my win leave me, but this is, this is the fricking Quincy Grand Prix. What the mm-hmm. devastation, but just, just talk on that, that event. Yeah. So I ended up, that's the only race out of the the three years and the four races uh that's the only race i didn't start on the pole and i started 12th and i was i I got stuck behind a group of qualifying and didn't think i had a shot at all but ended up 
getting a good start and just picking people off each lap. I'd pass four carts a lap, just just rolling up there. And then I got mm-hmm. to Jeff Dolan, who was the leader, and I just laid my bumper to him and pushed the shit out of him. And the goal was just to check out, just like I learned from the year before, just check out, turn it into a two-cart race. And we did that. And I knew I was faster than Jeff. I That that year, I, I don't usually say I, I had the fastest cart, but I, I did. I was up front in every session, except for Evan Stommer, because he uh, was practicing and <laughs> qualified on R60 tires, which yeah. are not the Ignite tires. <laughs> and he ended up getting DQ'd. But uh, I, I had the fastest cart all weekend. And I knew I was faster than Jeff, but I had to work with him. And I'd much rather be behind him because I could set up the pass. Mm-hmm. And we checked out and I thought we were good. And then the last lap, uh, all of a sudden, here comes Evan Stommer and Hunter Richardson. And they were, they were pushing and giving it hell because they were coming from the back. And I was pushing Jeff who I knew I was faster than. So, but I had to work with them. I felt like he kind of dragged me back to them in a way. So they caught us on the last lap going in, going right, right when you uh, were going back up the hill, mm-hmm. all of a sudden he gets to my outside. I'm like, Oh crap, what the hell? And it really throws you off. And uh, something ended up happening to them where they got separated and were a non-factor, like right after they got to us, they were a non-factor, but it still kind of threw me off going into the whole corners. Mm-hmm. And I lost a little bit of a gap to Jeff and then, I was going to get it back. And then we get to the back straightaway where you need to make your move. I wasn't as close as I wanted to be. And I started tapping on the back of my helmet because I thought they were still behind me, like push me mm-hmm. I turn and they're not there. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? And so I'm just ducking and, and just trying to get the best draft I can. And Jeff left a car width on the inside. And by a car width, I mean, only a car width. like there was hardly any room, but, I said, screw it, I'm taking it, and barely squeezed in, and that last corner is a really steep curb, and it's not a curb that you can just gradually no. climb up on. No. It's a 90-degree curb. It's the and curb you, that has caused like Matt Kretchel and Pistol Pete Vetter yes. to hit it and go out yes. wide, and then you start cartwheeling out of the go-kart and potentially paralyze yourself. Yes, so I, I was trying to get as close as that as possible but not hit it. And I was wheel to wheel with Jeff and we're coming out of there. And all of a sudden, you know, usually you don't go through that section side by side. You, mm-hmm. you really just don't, unless it's the last lap, you do not go through there side by side. It's just, it's stupid. And if you're on the outside, just check up and get behind because that, that corner is just so fast and dangerous. But I, for the first time all weekend went side by side to there. And uh, the cart started to get loose. Well, actually, the cart started to get tight. And I didn't want to run out the track because I would I would shove him into the wall. And mm-hmm. that would throw him out of the cart easily. So I put a lot of wheel into it to stay off of him. And it ended up getting me loose. And I think you, you have a video of it in slow-mo. It's oh, yeah. honestly, cr- I don't know how I saved it. It's, it's I was almost full turn sideways. Would have had him. But just getting sideways that little bit is what is what killed the race for me. And I was devastated. I hit my mm-hmm. hand on the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, my gosh. And the, uh, the video that I got, I mean, you have that moment. You know, that like, oh, God, they're side by side. And then, like, you you and Jeff both realized your, your, your respective positions. Because as soon as that happens, Jeff Dolian's got his hand off the wheel putting it up in the air in celebration. And like you said, man, you just slam that wheel and you're just like, just the devastation. Mm. What, what was the, what was the motion like on that cool down lap? It was just, damn. Like, I'm like, I'm I, It was, it sucked. It was still good to get a podium, but it was like, I'm, I'm going to win one of these things eventually. Like this is the race I want to win mm-hmm. because it is such a rush in that race. I've never been so zoned in in my life. Like it's incredible. 
racing as a whole will really get you zoned in. But when you're racing at Quincy, I've never been so tunnel visioned and focused and cotton mouthed. <laughs> like it's just you, you aren't thinking about anything mm-hmm. other than racing. And after that race, it was just so defeating to, to lose it. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to win this. There's, there's no way. And it kind of sucked because the race, one of the races after, I think it was masters or something might've been ignite masters or just normal masters. It came down to Jeff and Crutchell, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they were side by side, just like me and Dolan were. And uh, Jeff Dolan was on the inside and he, to put it, I mean, to put it nicely, he, he drove Crutchell all the way to the wall and it put Crutchell in the wall and Crutchell f- flew out of his cart. Mm-hmm. And it was when he, when he did that, it was, it was like, wow, like I damn near wrecked my ass trying to stay off of you. And then you just ran that guy to the wall. So it made me think a little differently about what I should have done. But yeah. And the, at the end of the day, I did the right thing. Mm-hmm. I ended up actually posting it on Instagram saying something along the lines of maybe I should have done something differently. Uh, somebody didn't like that from Margay. Uh, I won't say who, but so- somebody didn't like it because my stepdad was actually there and, and saying, talking to somebody and they said something about my post that I, I guess they thought that maybe I met that I should have just wrecked them which that's not what I meant. I mean, I'm not going to go out and just intentionally wreck people, but it just makes you think when you're, you see people in the same position you are in and they don't do the right thing. And I caught some flack for that, but I, I stood next to my guns. I, I was confident in what I was, the decisions I was making. One of my, my favorite quotes is I race people, how they race me. And so when Mm -hmm. you see, how certain people race other people, then that kind of gets you that mental picture of like, okay, so I know what I can do to this driver. Like if yeah. you know a guy that's over aggressive sometimes or, or, you know, consistently wrecking people, then that kind of tells you in your mind, like, well, then I guess that they, they can take a taste of their own medicine kind of in yeah. a way. So yeah, you, you, <laughs> that, that, that raw emotion, that, that disappointment, if you will, of just being that, that close to winning the Quincy Grand Prix, you take that to the Grand Prix uh, last year in 2021 and you take it and you, and you get the win. I mean, you got the pole position again Mm -hmm. and actually both ignite senior and in pro. I remember, I don't remember where I was at the time, but I was out of town or something and I'm watching on socials or I'm watching race monitor and I'm like watching you do this. And I'm like, please, for the love of God. Like I, I shared just that little sliver of devastation with you that day that you got the runner up that I was like, please, for the love of God, Mm -hmm. like this is, this is his time. And you, you didn't do it in senior, but you did it in pro, which I thought was just a little strange. Like I expected if you were going to do it, yeah. you were going to do it in senior. But, um, man, what what was that? What was that weekend like for you? Finally getting the W, and once again the emotions at that checkered flag. Except it's a completely night and day difference to what the what the story just was. We they didn't race in twenty twenty because of mm-hmm. COVID, and we get going to twenty twenty one and. I felt confident as I, as I should. I mean, you know, I finished third, finished second. What's next? It's first. So I was pretty confident. Ended up running two classes with one cart and that's the ignite cart, which is a little, it's difficult to, to run two classes with the same cart because you can't tune for both classes exactly how Mm -hmm. you want. Um, But we did our best. And again, we had great speed all weekend and ended up getting pole for two classes and ignite senior was the first race to go and uh they're doing the national anthem i'm on the front row i closed my eyes during the national anthem and it was it was so it was emotional like i literally was holding back tears because i'm i'm on the front row there's so much emotion of i want to win this race the national anthem going on it was incredible and the nerves of being on the front row at that race are just, it's, it's scary, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh, we got rolling. I ended up settling or actually I settled in second, I think, and then got up to first, led a couple laps and then ended up getting freight trained and put back to fourth. And unfortunately being fourth, 
everybody stayed in line all the way to the end <laughs> and it's it's hard to win the race from yeah. fourth so so i ended up st- just finishing fourth and that was that was pretty devastating because i looked at pro briggs as a harder class exactly. to win um so i'm like well i don't know if i'm gonna win we go into that race on the pole again get a good start think i get filed back you know there was there's some guys up there that like to lead and unfortunately quincy is a little different compared to other races a lot of other races guys want to lead all mm-hmm. the time you get these real real big mainly two cycle guys and and guys that are really aggressive where they just want to lead every lap quincy's not like that you, you just need to work together get in line so there were some guys that just that were there that were aggressive and wanted to get up front so we're like okay just get up front uh and then trevor eggemeyer ended up getting up into the lead and he led the whole back half of the race i think and i was settled in fourth again and everybody was in line again and it was looking like i might not be able to 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 do anything again we're all so, in yeah, line seems, i'm just seems I'm like a fourth. healthy dose of deja vu yeah so i was like oh man i, I got it i gotta go and um i ended up Jeff Dolan was right in front of me and with, I believe like two laps to go, three laps to go, probably three to go. uh, I get a good run on Jeff and I got Avery Scott behind me and I point left that I'm going to take the position and I move and she pushes me right by and I settle in third and it was perfect, perfectly executed pass. So then I'm like, okay, okay. I can, I can do something from third. So it was, uh, Eggemeyer leading, I think e- Eli Fox, I think was second. And then I forgot who, or I was, I was third. So we get down to the last tight corner that leads onto that big straightaway where you're coming into the kink where the start finish line is. And when we got onto that straightaway, everybody just fanned out. It was like the start of an Indy car <laughs> race at like Pokemon. It was everybody just, we were in line the whole time, but everybody fanned out. And you watch it from Avery Scott's on board. She's got the best view of the whole situation. So uh, Eli Fox kind of goes left on Eggemeyer. And then I go right on Eli Fox. And then uh, Jeff Dolan goes left on Eli. So And then Avery Scott decides, I'm going to go right. <laughs> and she gets behind me. Yeah. And I get, I'm like, right on Eggemeyer's inside all by myself just got to his inside and I had the position and Trevor, he, <laughs> he was in the lead and he just started getting passed from all directions. And when he saw me, he realized he can't move down and I'm there. And then all of a sudden I get a huge shot from Avery Scott and it pushes me clear. And all I was saying going through that kink into the start finish line was no way, no way, no <laughs> way. Like just no way, no way, no mm-hmm. way. And, and then once I got to that line, I literally just started screaming through throwing my fist up and you don't go down into turn one there. Cause there's a jump you're in the air and you make a turn. You don't go down there with one hand on the wheel, <laughs> but Somehow, I was going down day, there. You found a way to yeah, make it work. I, I was I was fist bumping over the jump and just screaming and it was I couldn't believe it and and you always like have a moment of doubt in moments like that like this is not mm-hmm. happening and it was crazy because like probably the most exciting thing was when I we came around to the pit entrance and I'm just fist bumping and screaming and people are giving me a thumbs up and the most exciting thing was when you peel off either the pit road or stay on the track the official points at me and points for me to go to the front straight. <laughs> that was like, that was like, it solidified. I'm going, I'm, I'm just so excited. And I come onto the front straight away. I, J- Jason's telling me to, Jason Burgess, the flagman's trying to tell me to slow down. I come in fast. I skid the rear tires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just screaming. I was, I, I was just screaming and so overcome with emotion and uh, ended up crying actually a little bit, like unwillingly, it just all of a sudden started happening because it was so awesome and uh, got the post-race interview and ended up 
because I was so excited, uh, ended up getting a news interview, which I don't think any other driver mm-hmm. did. Like, I actually got put on the news because I was so excited. And uh, it was just incredible. And, I, you know, I would trade anything for that day. That was probably the best day of my life. And to win it in pro Briggs with an Ignite car was incredible. You know, I, I look at myself and what I do in racing is kind of not a budget operation, but compared to a lot, it is, Oh yeah. This is all I can afford. And my mm-hmm. car isn't, isn't new every race. And my, I mean, my, my current motor I have is leaking oil like crazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, uh, so to, I've always kind of felt like an underdog. So when I did that, especially in pro Briggs, it was incredible. It was awesome to, that was the first race I've ever raced where there was money involved. And I, I won it 750 bucks, which unfortunately didn't pay for my parts that weekend. <laughs> uh, Cause I, I decided in the, the, the uh, sprint race on Saturday to wall the back of the cart, bend the axle. And that's another thing that was kind of incredible about it is, uh, I bent the axle and we had to thrash on the cart all night and mm-hmm. into the morning to get the axle on. We were having problems in both warm ups. You have two warm ups and then you go race. Them. And in both warm ups, our chain fell off. And oh God. I was panicking because I'm literally starting on pole and we can't get the chain to stop falling off. So it was very nerve wracking. And me, my stepdad, and my buddy Zach are trying to figure it out, thrashing on it. I ended up calling one of the Margay guys I didn't pay for a mechanic that weekend but I ended up calling one of them over like hey can you help please I'm like so we ended up getting it right and it was it was I guess really cool to come through that adversity I guess but it it was incredible especially the the pace lap around on the back of the truck where you get to wave at all the fans I mean they gave me a bottle of champagne and that bottle of champagne was gone by the time I got back to the pits. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, dude. Uh, so I was, I was spraying it. I was putting it over my head. I was chugging it. I was so excited. People are cheering. I had somebody chant my name. It's, it's just crazy. And I, you couldn't smack a smile off my face. And uh, to, to get that trophy, you know, they could keep that 700 bucks for all I care. I, I just wanted <laughs> that damn trophy. Mm-hmm. I, it's funny you say that I can't wipe the smile off my face just hearing you tell that story like I mean I've I've done some pretty pretty cool things but you know I like maybe getting on the podium at Indianapolis in the formula car was really cool but just I just feel that emotion for you so much dude and yeah. it was so cool to see that on socials and I sent you a message on Instagram like in all caps like hell yeah brother like let's go yeah. like I was just so happy to see that man yeah there's there's no rush like Quincy and it's just a badass race and you have to have balls to go around there. There's really no mm-hmm. other way to, I mean, you have to be, it's, it's an incredible race. And I, I try to tell everybody they need to run it. A lot of people say, no, I'm, I, I don't want to run it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, I've seen somebody who that was their first big national race. I think it was the first year I did it. They literally wrecked every session and bent mm-hmm. so many axles. They ended up having to buy the chassis. I asked the guy, I'm like, what, what is, what's your background? Like, where'd you come from? He's like, Oh, this is one of my first two or six races. I'm like, yeah, this is probably a horrible track to, to run <laughs> this, but uh, it's, it's incredible. There's no rush like it. And it's, it's, I, I love that race. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. You've got me sold on, I don't it, somewhere 50, 50 on if I should do it or not. Like it, it's, <laughs> I, I, I just love to do that sometime. Well, I knew, they always said, if you've won, you've won Quincy, you've done something. And mm-hmm. it felt pretty badass to sit there and say, I've done something. And I mean, to put it into perspective, how, how dangerous that race is. And that's part of the excitement is the danger. And mm-hmm. just about every year, somebody can get carried off in an ambulance um, with an injury, you know, broken wrist or something. Uh, it's happened. And, you know, I mean, Evan Stommer, when I came up to him, uh, last year before the race, I said, are you racing? And he's like, no, they wouldn't let me because he was racing with, uh, Cape motorsports. Yep. And, uh, they did not, they approved every other race for him to run, but they would not approve that one. So mm-hmm. that was kind of a, wow. <laughs> I mean, like, the risk factor there is for sure. Just staring you down in the face, every single corner you go into. Yeah. If like, if I got offered a, a, a ride with Roger Penske, if he wouldn't let me run Quincy, that would be, that would be tough. <laughs> 
<laughs> we do have some listener questions, and we do that at the end of the show, and kind of like rapid fire ish. First off, from Jed Perkins himself, thoughts on cart or thoths on WKA Cart Week Daytona CIK two hundred six class <laughs> officiating LMAO. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, I, he he already DM'd me on Instagram to my post, and uh, yeah, I, that was that was horrible down there. I have I've seen a lot of shit shows, but that was one of the biggest, downright dangerous. A lot of the way those guys raced, and uh, I just kept getting caught up in their shit and mm-hmm. them running each other off the track. I ended up after the race going to the race director who. <sighs> isn't much of a race director. Apparently I should need to apply for being the race director, WKA, but kind of really telling him off about how unacceptable it was and dangerous. It seemed like the only way they were penalizing people is if the pushback bumper was pushed in, but people were side podding each other off the track and it was horrible. And I've honestly thought about my front bumper is absolutely destroyed from that race. I thought about actually boxing it up. <laughs> and mailing it to WKA with a note. Uh, I'd like to know what other people think if I should do that or just stay out of trouble, but I don't care. WKA, is, it's kind of a joke. They need to rethink their uh, structure. You know, one of the things that we could talk about in the next episode is kind of um, kind of the racecraft kind of thing, you know, and how to race clean and with respect. And I think that's something that, you know, off of the experience that we had that we just shared that we could – really get into um another question and this is what we'll end on and it kind of segues into you kind of thanking the people that that mean a lot to you um i got one here from uh a a, a zach smith i don't know if that name rings a bell to you and it says how much does he appreciate his fill-in cart chief he's he's been pretty good he's he was at charlotte and he was at uh quincy and he definitely helped uh i ended up giving him a 150 dollar bonus i think from my my check that I won at Dang. Quincy. <laughs> I, I That's was, more than I've ever given Matt Zagaitis well, for filming. It was literally only because I won. If I didn't win, he wouldn't have got anything. But <laughs> I, I was feeling generous. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's done a good job. And him and I, have, I'm trying to get him more into karting. And uh, we're hoping that we can do something maybe later this year or in the next year. we got some plans and some talks of what we're doing that are kind of exciting that we'd like to do. That's that's awesome. Just just as we end here, I just want to give you a chance, you know, anything you want to add um, and where can people find you and follow your racing journey on social media? Uh, it's really just uh, on Instagram at Avery Schwamm. That's that's pretty much the only thing I use. I guess I should probably try to expand my my outreach, I guess. But that's that's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> Avery. Thank you for coming on, man. I, I appreciate it. This was such a fun time to sit down and talk to you. And I'm, I'm literally just saving stuff on the table just so we can, we can do this again, man. I just, I enjoy talking to you. We told some awesome stories and I think people are going to really enjoy this episode. So thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. I look forward to doing the second episode because we missed out on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, Avery. And, and I just want to thank everybody for, for tuning into this episode and uh, listening on whatever platform you listen on. And I, I like to plug at the end of the show the the merchandise that I have. Yes, I know it's self, self-plugs self are, are always lovely. But, you know, this show, it, it does cost a little bit of money to get it out on those podcast platforms. So we kind of offset that with, with some of the merchandise. And, and so you can go and, and shop some of that. Shop atanetwork.com. Got hoodies, shirts, mugs, just a lot of different stuff that you can can go in there and it, it gives us a few bucks and it helps keep the lights on over here. So if you want to, wouldn't mind checking that out. Once again, shop ATA network.com. You can find links to my social media, Avery's social media, anything that we talked about that, you know, we want to link to, we'll find that, um, at the link dump at Bobby Krug.com slash podcast. So you can go there to find everything that you know, was talked about in today's show. So one more final, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thanks again to Avery for coming on and we'll, we'll catch you in the next episode of the ATA network podcast.